At number 10 spot, we have Big Nose George. Born in March 1834, George Pear, more so known as Big Nose George, was a big time cattle rustler and a highwayman. So in other words, he was up to no good. Then in 1878, him and his gang went on to murder two law enforcement officers and immediately after, every authority figure in Wyoming was after this guy. While he was on the run, he did the great decision to separate from his group members, which is a really smart idea. But Big Nose George had a big mouth. When he was on the run, he decided to hit up a small bar in Miles City, Montana, and here they would get extremely drunk and boast to others in the bar that they did in fact kill two law enforcement officers in Wyoming. Eventually, he was arrested. In prison, he would try to plan an escape, only to be met with failure. When news broke out about his attempt to escape, an angry mob of around 200 people rushed into the jail and decided to take his life. After passing, doctors Thomas McGee and John Osborne took his body to study the chemistry of a criminal. Here they would cut out a portion of his head to investigate his brain, but no part went to waste. The cap of his head was used for an ashtray, pen holder, and a doorstop. It didn't stop there though. They then skinned him and then sent the skin to a tannery where he was literally made into a pair of shoes and then a medical bag. What the actual? Number nine, Pedro Mountain's mummy. The Shoshone Indians of Wyoming believed in a race of tiny people and said that they were responsible for the deaths of their comrades with the use of poisonous arrows. They described this race of people to stand from 20 inches to three feet tall. These people were known to be very hostile, not only to the natives, but to their own kind. It was said that they would take the life of their own people if they became too sick and couldn't help the community anymore. So basically, if you're old, you're dead. After years and years, there was no solid evidence of these little people until 1932, a 14-inch fully formed mummy was found in the San Pedro Mountains near Casper, Wyoming. When they examined the object, they confirmed that it did have a real human remains inside, although it was unclear if it was a native child or if it was a race of little people. Eventually, the mummy would be passed on through different people, but all of them had one thing in common. They would be faced with extreme bad luck as soon as they possessed the mummy, which led many people to believe that it was cursed. It was passed on to a businessman named Yvonne Goodman who passed away shortly after. Then it was passed on to another businessman, Leonard Walder, who also passed away only a year after having it. Now the whereabouts of the mummy are completely unknown. At number eight spot, we have Ghost Ship of Plate River. If you visit the Pathfinder Dam on the North Plate River, there's a small chance you might find a glimpse of the ghost ship. It's believed that every 25 years, a Death ship appears out of the midst near the dam. The first ever recorded sighting of this eerie vessel was in 1862 when a trapper named Leon Weber reported a large wave of fog, then saying it took the form of a sailing ship with a mast and sails covered in silvery shiny frost. He said he saw people on board, but they're all covered in the shiny frost. When he looked closer, he saw someone that looked exactly like his fiance at the time as well. He then returned home from work a month later and discovered that his fiance passed away the day he saw the ship. Then there was another sighting 20 Five years later in 1887 when cattleman Gene Wilson saw the exact frosty ship appear out of nowhere. He would also report people on board but all of them were frozen and as soon as he went home he found out that his home was burned to ashes and his wife was lifeless a hundred yards from the house. Number seven, France E. Warren Air Force Base. Located three miles west of Cheyenne, this Air Force Base was first established as Fort D.A. Russell in 1867. Named in honor of Civil War Brigadier General David A. Russell, it is the oldest continuously active military installation in the Air Force. Along with these old buildings, the legends are told that many of the old cavalry soldiers also continue to linger, often seen walking up the grounds or in the dormitories. Another story tells of a spirit that is said to harass female members of the security team. One of the most famous stories on the base takes place in Quarters 80, often referred as the Gust Quarters. During the early days, Quarters 80 was home to a young officer, but unfortunately for him, he was out on duty for the majority of the time, so one day he came home very exhausted and found a soldier entertaining his wife in their bedroom. The husband was furious and was looking to eliminate the man by any means necessary, but the soldier decided to make a decisive action and leap out the window. Instead of escaping, he actually hung himself by getting stuck on the clothesline outside of the home. Ever since this moment, the Gus quarters are known for their supernatural activity, from objects being thrown across the room to just being grabbed out of nowhere. Number six, the ghostly bride of Plains Hotel. In the Plains Hotel of Chan, Wyoming, locals claim that there is a spirit of a bride that haunts everyone who steps in. Story goes that a lady named Rosie and her groom were on their honeymoon at the hotel. As the night went on, the husband decided to step out and get some drinks at a nearby bar. When Rosie arrived to fetch him, she noticed him walking upstairs with an escort. So of course she was shocked and decided to secretly follow them. This is when Rosie followed them all the way up to the room and in a jealous rage shot both of them with the husband's firearm 
taking both of their lives immediately. After this, she would regret her actions and return back to the honeymoon suite to take her own life. Now, if you enter the plane hotel, you may be met with the apparitions of the three people involved in the story. Rosie walks down the halls with a bright blue dress, which would have been the dress for her wedding. In the Humphrey list, we have the Devil's Tower. This 1200 foot tower of rugged rock is known as the Devil's Tower. It is located in Northeast Wyoming, and when you look closer in the area, there is nothing that even closely resembles this behemoth. It's very unique in nature as it has all these grooves surrounded all around the rock. Although these can be explained by natural phenomena like a former volcano, Native Americans around the area have a completely different belief. Many claim that back in the day, the natives were being attacked by these gigantic bears. So to defend themselves, they would go up the Devil's Tower and pray to the Great Spirit to save them. They claim this is why the tower had grooves because it was from the bears trying to claw themselves up on it. Number four, Wyoming Frontier Prison. Located in Rawlings, Wyoming, the Wyoming Frontier Prison has the reputation of being one of the toughest prisons in the Wild West. Opened in 1901, it housed some of the most violent inmates, featured a dungeon, botched executions, and was known for rampant violence. Now a museum, employees and visitors alike have reported ghostly encounters. There have been apparitions spotted in the cell blocks and reports of a malevolent spirit in the dungeon who has threatened visitors. The prison is so notorious that it was featured on an episode of Travel Channel's Ghost Adventures. And ghost hunters have captured orbs on camera, but let me know what you guys think about that. The museum offers haunted Halloween night tours if you want to have a ghostly encounter of your own. Number three, Heart Mountain Relocation Center. Starting with an old building originally used for an irrigation project prior to the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Heart Mountain Relocation Center began construction on barracks and facilities to relocate American families of Japanese descent in June 1942. Over the next three years, the camp would house over 14,000 people. Just to put that into perspective, if they made this prison a town, it would be the third largest city in Wyoming based on population alone. As World War II occurred, many horrors occurred within as well. Abuse torture with just some of the things that the Japanese had to go through with many people passing away as well. It eventually got shut down at the end of the war but the discrimination towards the Japanese was too big that they couldn't let it go that easily. Today the camp has been reinvented to be an informational interpretive center educating Americans about this dark time about our past. People working at the place claim to see these shadow people in the halls when it gets dark as well. Number two, Old Faithful Inn. This is yet another story of a deadly wedding. I don't know what it is in Naomi but what's with all these bloody wedding stories? Are y'all not happy there? Built in 1903, Yellowstone's Old Faithful Inn is considered a National Historic Landmark. This of course means that it comes with some haunting tales. The Headless Bride of the Old Faithful Inn is the story of tragedy. A wealthy woman from back east fell in love with a con artist, told by her family that if she marries this man, they would disown her. She then took her inheritance and ran away with him. On their honeymoon in Yellowstone, he chopped off her head and ran away with her money long before before they found the body. Now the headless bride has been spotted wandering the hotel in search of her lost love. All the way at our number one spot, we have the Sheridan Inn. The Sheridan Inn has been a community landmark for nearly 130 years. Miss Kate, one of the beloved employees and patrons, is said to have never left. In 1901, Miss Kate moved to Sheridan and began working at the inn. She moved into a room on the third floor in 1906, where she would spend the rest of her life. A friend placed her ashes in the walls after her death in 1968, all while the inn was being renovated. She is now the innkeeper's guardian. You might feel her in a cold spot or have your lights turned on and off if you're at the inn. Starting off this countdown at number 10, the Stanley Hotel. One of the most famous haunts of Colorado is the Stanley Hotel. The Stanley, which served as the basis for Stephen King's The Shining, is more than a century old and is home to countless ghost sightings and unexplainable events. Multiple witnesses have seen a face peering out of the window of room 407 when it was not occupied. One witness saying in the room reported that a light kept turning off and on. Allegedly, the guests acknowledged the ghost, assured him that they'd only be staying two days, and asked him to keep the light on. The spirit left the light alone after that, but proceeded to spend the rest of the night noisily playing around with the elevator just outside the door. Rooms 217, 401, and 418 have unusually high reports of paranormal activity. Cleaning crews tell of strange noises and seeing impressions on the bed when the rooms were empty. Guests in room 418 report that the sounds of children playing in the hall, but when those reports came in, there were no children checked into the hotel. Number 9, The Black Forest Haunting. In the early 
1990s, Steve Lee moved his family into a log cabin home in the Black Forest region of northern Colorado. They rented it for a year before purchasing it, but once the land was theirs, things started getting weird. Initially, lights and electronic devices kept turning off and on, and eerie noises sometimes filled the air. This was followed by a strange odor that wafted through the cabin that burned the family's throats and eyes. Thinking these happenings were the work of pranksters, the Lee family installed motion detectors and cameras. However, the motion detectors would go off when nothing seemed to be happening on the cameras. Steve Lee added more cameras, capturing more unexplainable phenomenon like orbs, beams of light, and sometimes ghostly forms with faces. The Lees could no longer pretend the cameras were the problem, and they contacted the show Sightings to document what became one of the most famous hauntings in America. The Sightings crew experienced and captured quite a bit of phenomena themselves. Cameras were knocked off tripods, one of their producers experienced an attempted possession, and a medium working with them determined there were multiple spirits in the house and a rift in space and time on the property. Number 8, The Vampire's Grave. European lore is rich in tales of vampires, yet one of those creatures may have found themselves in a small town in Colorado. Theodore Glava was a Transylvanian immigrant who moved to Colorado and became a coal miner. Legend says the man was tall and pale with a dark coat and long fingernails. In 1918, he passed away of the flu and was buried in the local cemetery, where some say they have seen his figure lurking at night. Some say that the tree guarding Glava's grave grew from the stake that was hammered into his heart post-mortem. Number 7, Butch Cassidy's Lost Gold. Butch Cassidy was one of the most infamous outlaws in Wild West history, and his life allegedly ended in a shootout in 1908, but it's said that he left behind mementos of his acclaimed career. According to the rumors, Cassidy reportedly stashed thousands of dollars worth of gold in a hideout in an unassuming Irish canyon. If this is true, the gold may still be there to this day. Should you ever visit the Irish canyon, keep a careful eye out and you may be the one to discover Cassidy's hidden treasure. Number 6, Route 666. The infamous Route 666, nicknamed the Devil's Highway, runs through Colorado. It was renumbered as Route 491 in 2003 in hopes of dispelling the fear surrounding the demonic numbers. However, changing the numbers didn't take away the unexplainable phenomena that occurred, and is still occurring on this cursed road. When it was still known as Route 666, Six, the stretch of highway had an unusually high accident rate. People driving along the Devil's Highway have reported creepy incidences, such as a black phantom sedan that follows dangerously close no matter how high the speed. Many have pulled over only to realize that there's no car behind them. There are also tales of a pack of hellhounds that terrorize innocent travelers. The beast somehow managed to keep up with the vehicle regardless of how fast or recklessly the driver maneuvers the car. Many believe these hellhounds are responsible for shutting tires and causing terrible wrecks. Some have even claimed that the beasts are capable of jumping into the windows and mauling people. Halfway at number 5, the Riverdale Road. Riverdale Road runs through Thornton and is lined with creepy cottonwood trees, where you can allegedly see hanging bodies by the light of the full moon. A Camaro with no driver can also be spotted winding down the stretch of road. Riverdale Road also has its own Lady in White legend. Reportedly, visitors have seen this strange woman in their rearview mirror. Locals believe that she is a ghost who is looking for the spirits of her deceased children. Number 4, the Gates of Hell. According to local legend, the Gates of Hell lies near Riverdale Road in Thornton. Rumor has it that the stretch of road leads to rusted iron iron gates that open to a place of satanic worship and human sacrifices. Behind these gates also rest the charred ruins of an old mansion that leads directly to hell, people say. The mansion was built by David Wolpett during the gold rush. Over the years, the structure was used as a brothel cowboy saloon and a hippie commune before it was burned down in 1975. It's said that a man living in the mansion took his family's lives before setting the home on fire. This dark story has led people to believe that the grounds of the mansion are portals to the underworld. Number 3, The Hotel Colorado. The guests of the Hotel Colorado are often awoken in the night by strange sounds and flickering lights. Some are plagued by sightings of a little girl wearing a Victorian era dress, while others recount how their personal items were moved around or missing. Both bell tower suites are reportedly haunted, and the elevator seems to have a mind of its own at times. Stories tell of a female presence that has a habit of watching male guests as they sleep. The screams of a woman can also often be heard throughout the hotel, believed to belong to a deceased chambermaid. According to the lore, she was involved in a love triangle which ended with one of her lovers taking her life in one of the guest rooms, and her former room has been turned into a storage space because the paranormal activity within the room was said to be too intense to remain open to the public. Number 2, The Ridge Home Asylum Every state has an abandoned asylum story, and this is Colorado's. Ridge Home admitted its first patient in 1912, and from there began a history full of controversy. Many of the home's residences were admitted despite still being mentally capable, but over time their mental states declined due to their confinement. Rumors that patients were unnecessarily medicated arose, and over time parts of the building closed due to unsafe living conditions. Finally, in 1992, the doors of Ridge Home Asylum closed for good 
said, but that doesn't change the fact that the legend that some patients were mistreated there and passed away still remains to haunt people who try to explore the abandoned building. Now coming in at number one, Hatchet Lady of Red Rocks. Red Rocks is a staple of Colorado and is a big deal for people who live there. But what if I told you it's home to some eerie and paranormal tales? Would you still want to see your favorite band play there, even when there's something lurking in the shadows watching your every move? Yeah, probably not. One of the more popular and well-known legends surrounding Red Rocks is that of the Hatchet Lady. She wasn't always known as the Hatchet Lady though. In fact, many stories say that this woman, old Mrs. Johnson, would pull a coat over her head and carry around a hatchet in order to ward off her daughter's suitors. Apparently, she wasn't a fan of young love. She of course has tales that make her into a headless ghost, that scare off couples who are getting a little too intimate in the shadows. Other myths believe that this hatchet lady was a homeless woman who lived in the area, like in a nearby cave in the 1950s, and instead of going after young lovers, she'd go after children. Any young kids who ended up a little too close for their liking would be executed, and she'd hide their bodies and severed limbs around the grounds. So a word of advice, don't stray too far from the marked paths and stick together. Starting off at number 10, the Voodoo Caves. Located in the Beaver Dam Mountains is a pipe known as the Voodoo Caves. According to local lore, practitioners of dark magic performed countless rituals inside the pipe, leaving behind an evil residual energy that curses or takes the lives of those who enter. It's believed if anyone within the cave insults Satan or makes any derogatory remarks about the entity that lurks there, they will find themselves trapped inside by rising water. The malevolent force got the blame for the passing of a worker who went inside the underground pipe to remove a clog when he got pinned down and drowned. Now at number 9, Bear Lake Monster. The urban legend of the Bear Lake Monster goes back to at least 1868, when Desert News reporter Joseph C. Rich ran a series about the serpent-like creature. The series quoted many well-known citizens who all claimed they'd seen the monster. However, in 1888, Mr. Rich admitted that he'd made all the stories up. The legend continues, however. Every so often, someone does claim they have seen the Bear Lake creature, which coincidentally resembles the Loch Ness Monster legend in Scotland. Here at number 8, the legend of Lillian Gray. In the middle of Salt Lake City Cemetery sits a gravestone reading Lily E. Gray, June 6, 1881 to November 14, 1958 accompanied by the very ominous phrase, Victim of the Beast 666. Lillian remains a mystery and her headstone forms the source of wild tales of her being a sacrifice to Satan, or that she herself was a Satanist. Some have speculated that she was another innocent woman accused of witchcraft. Another theory, because Utah is clearly full of ominous places, proposes she died on Highway 666, which is also one of the country's most infamously dangerous freeways. Coming in at number 7, Skinwalker Ranch. The Sherman Ranch in Ballard, Utah is better known to locals and paranormal investigators as the Skinwalker Ranch, or the UFO Ranch. The name comes from the alarming number of alleged skinwalker sightings and reports of paranormal and UFO related phenomena. The 40 acre ranch borders the Indian reservation and has a history of mutilated cattle, spirit orbs, unidentified objects hovering in the sky, and what's been described as a large red eyed beast similar to the Native American depictions of skinwalkers, half human, half animal monstrosities. Now coming in at number 6, the ghost of Red Lopez. In early 1915, Bingham miners began hearing a voice, supposedly the ghost of Raphael, Red Lopez. According to an article in the February 2nd, 1915 edition of the Ogden Daily Standard, Lopez was a miner who shot and took the life of another miner in November 1913. He also reportedly took the life of Bingham's police chief and two sheriff deputies in an ambush later that day. A week later, he then reportedly took the lives of two other deputies during a manhunt for him that lasted into 1914. But Lopez was never found or heard from again in Utah. It's still one of the state's largest crime mysteries that wasn't closed until 2003. Back in 1915, the report stated that the workers began to be terrorized during the past few days by the shoutings of a gloomy voice in an area of the mine where two of the deputies passed away. Halfway at number 5, Teen in a Tanning Bed. The urban legend about the bride cooking herself in a tanning bed circulated all over the country, but it allegedly originated in Utah with a teenage girl. The story begins with a 17 year old winning a trip to Hawaii and naturally she wanted to get bronze before her trip. Though limits exist for how long and how often you can sit in these tanning beds, the girl however supposedly found a way around this rule by hopping around town to town into different salons, four to be exact in just one afternoon. She eventually ended up in Utah Valley Regional Medical Center because her internal organs were shutting down and she went blind from cooking herself all day. Now a reminder, this one is just an urban legend.
Now at number four, the lady in purple. Over the years, many people have claimed to have seen a woman dressed in purple who appears angry or unhappy inside the Rio Grande Depot in Salt Lake City. In 2017, Rio Grande Cafe manager Colleen Murphy told KSL TV she has seen lights come on at night in a locked room at the bottom of a stairwell with nobody seemingly there to turn them on. She also said that she had been locked out of the building on multiple occasions late at night, with no real explanation. Others have told her they've heard singing at night, coming from the woman's bathroom in the depot, even when the building is seemingly empty. As the legend goes, the woman tossed her engagement ring onto the tracks during an argument with her fiance at the depot. Deciding she had made a mistake, she jumped down to retrieve the ring when she was struck and unfortunately passed away by an oncoming train. Now at number three, the inmate. Salt Lake Herald Republican on January 8th, 1905, reported a frightening tale from the Salt Lake City Jail. Two women at the jail reported they had seen a ghost there, walking the halls at night. The ghost was a man who wore a slouch hat pulled over his eyes and would peer through the grating in the building. They told the newspaper that the ghost was that of a former inmate who had died there in a gruesome manner. On one particular night, one of the women said that she heard a ghost noise by a door, then walked up and asked if it was indeed the dead inmate. Ain't you dead? She asked. By way of reply, the ghost began to prance up and down the narrow hallway, swinging his arms and smiling, laughing, and shaking his head. While they never saw the man the day he died, they told the newspaper they were convinced it was him. Now at number two, the Devil's Highway, kind of like what we mentioned before. The highway system originally named Route 666 and nicknamed the Devil's Highway crossed through an area of the United States known as the Four Corners, the meeting space of Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. All four states have reported paranormal experiences while on the stretch of highway. Tales range from hellhounds chasing alongside cars and slashing tires to skinwalkers shifting from animal to man before their very eyes, to an evil shaman who appears in the backseat to steal the driver's soul. Like many roads, Highway 666 also hosts a ghostly hitchhiker, a mysterious young woman in a nightgown walking the road alone. When someone tries to offer her a ride, she vanishes. A popular legend attached to the Devil's Highway is that of a mad trucker, a phantom semi-truck that terrorizes late night drivers before disappearing. One witness reported her husband's experience. Allegedly, he was driving on Route 666 one night when a semi-truck began heading straight for him and down the middle of the highway. He said the truck had to have been going around 130 miles per hour, with sparks and flames flying up from the wheels. He pulled off the road in time to miss what he thought would be a fiery collision, and the beast of a vehicle took off into the night. Now coming in at number one, the haunted old main. Everyone who has passed through the Southern Utah University campus has heard the lore of Virginia Loomis and Old Main, a building on the university's campus. As the legend goes, Virginia Loomis's life was taken in the late 1800s. Her body was discovered on the boulder used to make many of the bricks to construct the Cedar City building in 1898. It's said some of the bricks even contain her blood. Later in life, a janitor was hired at the university. On his first day of work, he was allegedly lighting the old coal furnace in Old Main's basement when something caused the furnace door to slam shut on his arm. He was supposedly burned until he passed away, unable to get free, becoming the human torch that burned Old Main to the ground in 1948. It's said that the ghost of Virginia was seen laughing in the flames, and Virginia was written on the janitor's skull. At our number 10 spot, we have the Candy Lady. In the early 1900s, children in the rural town of Terrell, Texas started to go missing. Some of the residents blamed it on the Candy Lady. The story says that she would go around leaving candy on children's home windows just before bedtime. As the parents began to fall asleep, it'll encourage children to grab the candy, but as they try to grab it, the lady grabs them and feasts on their sugar-laden blood until there isn't any left. A farmer allegedly found rotten teeth on his farm and later found the body of a boy with his pockets stuffed with candy. Many people believe that Candy Lady is in fact real and went by the name of Clara Crane. Clara Crane was accused of poisoning her husband back in 1895 with poison lace caramel candies. But that's not all. Five years before the incident, Crane's five-year-old daughter passed away from unknown causes, which many believe that she poisoned her daughter as well. At a number nine spot, we have La Llorona. This legend originates from El Paso, Texas. Almost all Latin cultures know the story of La Llorona, and the people of El Paso are no exception to that. La Llorona directly translates to the weeping woman, which perfectly describes the behavior of this malevolent spirit. She is said to haunt the riverbanks of the Rio Grande, where she is searching for her two children whom she had already drowned in that very river. Now there are many iterations of the story, but I'll just mention the most popular one. The legend goes that a lady found her boyfriend with another woman. After a heated argument between the two, the woman was heartbroken and wanted to get revenge, so she took the children and proceeded to drown them in the Rio Grande River in Texas. It's also said that when she was done throwing her children into the river, she went back to her lover's home 
home with a bloody wedding gown, showing her she would do whatever it took to be with him. It's said to be the reason why many children disappear in that very area, and she supposedly takes other children to fill the void she lost. So if you're in the area, beware of a woman weeping in a wedding gown who is sitting by the Rio Grande. I had a number eight spot of El Kakui. This creature is known as South Texas official boogeyman. There are many versions of El Kakui since it already originates in Mexico as well. It's said that this monster kidnaps children who misbehave and takes them back to the mountain where he lives to devour them. He appears as a hairless creature with an enormous head that dwarfs his spider-like body. He also has these large red glowing eyes, red ears to hear everything, and razor sharp fangs and claws to accompany that. The origin of El Kakui goes that a man was suffering with tuberculosis. Desperate to cure himself, he fetched an African witch doctor. The doctor told him to drink a child's blood, but as he did, he started to turn into the monster described. Ever since, he has a never-ending thirst for children's blood. At our number seven, we have the Screaming Bridge. In North Arlington, Texas, 50 years ago, there was a group of teenage girls driving home from a football game. The bridge was designed to only fit one car at a time, and I know, what a dumb bridge, but this was in the past and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. The girls weren't paying attention and went full speed over the bridge until a car with no headlights struck them head on, with all of the girls passing away. Some say when they go near the bridge, they can hear the distant screams sounding like the girls before they passed away. As well, if you go over the bridge and look down at the water below, you can see the tombstones of all the girls with their names and birthdays written on it. At number six spot, we have the Goatman's Bridge. Why are there so many haunted bridges? Like, I don't get it. But in Denton County, Texas, lies the Goatman's Bridge, which was built in 1884. This bridge is supposedly haunted by the ghost of the Goatman. The story goes that a black goat farmer named Oscar Washburn was renowned for quality meat, milk, and cheeses, and then he moved with his family just north of the bridge. Except when he arrived in this area, he was instantly the target of racial hate crime. The racist town folks came together and burned down the farm with the family inside. They then threw Oscar's body over that very bridge. Now he appears as a half goat, half man humanoid that reeks of decaying flesh. If you knock on the bridge three times, it said that you can summon the goat man, but now others use this area for rituals and other supernatural activities. Right in the hump of our list, we have the Lady of White Rock Lake. The lake is located in Dallas, Texas, and many visitors claim that they spot a drenched young woman who appears crawling out of the water or asking to fetch a ride. When many people offer her this ride, she disappears out of thin air and leaves a bloody wet seat mark and a terrified driver. Even though many of the drivers were scared to their core, some decide to go to the address given to them by the girl. When they arrive at the door, they're all met by the same man who tells them that his daughter had gone sailing and never came back. Many people believe the story is inspired by the 1953 book, Nyman Marcus, Texas, the story of the proud Dallas store. And according to the book, Malloy and his wife are driving home late one night in East Dallas when a young, beautiful blonde girl ghost appears on the road. Her elegant dresses is naturally wet and she seems to be in trouble. She gives them an address on gas and Avenue and ask them to be taken home. But as they drive, she disappears, leaving only a mark. At our number four spot, we have the Lake Worth Monster. You just learned about the Goatman, right? Well, this is basically the Goatman, but of the lake. This monster terrorized the people of the town for years, with many describing the creature as being seven feet tall, around 300 pounds, long neck, flopped eared, pot bellied, covered in white scales and hair. I swear, I just described Shaquille O'Neal. The monster was supposedly captured on camera, but you guys be the judge of that one. It looks like a two-year-old drew on a camera lens on a potato with a crayon and then took this photo. But who knows, it might be real. This beast was inspired by Sally Ann Clark's book, The Lake Worth Monster of Greer Lake, Fort Worth, Texas. In the book, the monster jumped on the hood of someone's car and shook up the car so badly that they got caught in a bad accident. The people described it being a seven feet tall being covered in scales and fur and resembled a half goat and half man. Pretty scary if you ask me. All the way at our number three spot, we have the Donkey Lady. The Donkey Lady of San Antonio, Texas dates all the way back in the late 1800s. The Donkey Lady was once a beautiful woman with children and a husband. But one day in a rage, the husband burned down the house with the children and wife still inside. The children passed away, but however, the wife managed to survive, but suffered greatly from this. Her toes and fingers would be fused together in a hoof like way, and her face was melted and sagging, inspiring the Donkey Lady name. There's a bridge in South San Antonio named the Old Apple White Bridge, or the Donkey Lady Bridge. This is the bridge she went to crown after this horrible tragedy. Now it's said if you go to the bridge after midnight and call out the Donkey Lady, she will appear just before you. Some have claimed she had run at people who call out her name, or sometimes just stalks in the forest line waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. At number two spot, we have the girl who danced 
with the devil. The story takes place in the 1970s in San Antonio, Texas with a young Mexican girl named Rosa. One day the girl wanted to attend a dance at a nearby nightclub named the El Cabarancito. However, the parents were very strict and didn't want her anywhere near the nightclub. Despite their order, she snuck out of her house and traveled all the way to the nightclub where she could finally have her dance. At the club, Rosa was approached by this very tall, charming, and well-dressed man who asked her permission to dance. When they began dancing, Rosa was terrified when she discovered he had goat hooves instead of feet. When she screamed in terror, people in the club started to chase him out, but as he got close, he vanished out of thin air, leaving a trail of smoke and the smell of sulfur. Devil activity if that wasn't enough. It's said that the area surrounding the nightclub still smells of sulfur to this day. At a number one spot with El Muerto. El Muerto, otherwise known as the Headless Horseman of Texas, is a Texas legend that dates all the way back in the mid 1800s. The story goes that two rangers, Creed Taylor and William Bigfoot Wallace, were hunting a criminal known as Vidal along the Mexican border. Vidal had been wreaking havoc all across the state of Texas, so when the ranger caught them, they wanted to set an example. So they did just that and cut his head clean off. They then tied his head to the saddle and sent his horse with the headless body running off into the night. Now the horse continued to explore the region with its headless rider. The tale of El Muerto began to grow after it was reported that both had been seen numerous times and that gunshots had no impact on either of them. Spotting El Muerto was thought to foreshadow bad luck because everyone who claimed to have seen him was struck with a series of bad luck and poor health following it. At a number 10 spot, we have the Seven Sisters Road. Located in southeast Nebraska, just outside of Nebraska City, is a road that locals call Seven Sisters Road. And if you're trying to find this on a map, it will be named L Street. But I wouldn't recommend taking a road trip down this place. Legend goes that a man had an argument with his parents and his seven sisters. It got to a point when his whole family hated him and he looked to seek revenge. So one day he waited in the woods outside of his home and waited for his parents to leave. After he forced or baited his sisters one by one outside of the house. He would end up hanging each and every single one of them where this road is situated today. Then eventually a road would be built on this path of the trees, causing them to be shut down. Ever since the construction of the road, this road is said to be haunted by the seven sisters who were executed. Many who have driven through the area report having problems with their cars stalling, headlights mysteriously dimming, speedometers freezing, and windows that roll up and down seemingly on their own. At our number 9 spot, we have Alliance Theater. On the east side of Nebraska is one of the most iconic buildings in the state, and that is the Alliance Theater. This was built back in 1903, starting off as a hotel. But in 1938, it was then rebranded into Imperial Theater until it switched to the name Alliance. It would host many different performing arts, but it said a few performers passed away inside of the theater. Some were caused by accidents, such as an actress named Mary who passed away after a piece of lightning equipment fell on her. Now, over the years, over its existence, many workers at the theater have reported their own ghostly tales. Some include whispers as if someone's right behind them and shadow figures walking around and some are even seen performing. Even in 2002, the owner, Gerald Bullard, had said to reporters that, quote, if the theater is actually haunted, then the ghosts are very friendly. It still remains open to this day, and many visitors claim to see the spirit of Mary. At our number eight spot, we have Blackbird Hill. North of Decatur, Nebraska, is a hill overlooking the Missouri River, and this hill is said to be infested with spirits. One notorious spirit that most visitors spot is of a young lady who could be screaming near the cliff. Legend goes that in 1840, a young couple in the area fell in love. This relationship carried both of them through school, but soon after they were done, the boy decided to travel abroad. His initial plan was to travel the world, then come back and marry the girl. But after a few months, the man never ended up returning back home. Months turned into years, and eventually the devastated girl gave up and married another man. The new couple then decided to move to a small cabin to what is now Blackbird Hill. And this is when the girl spotted her ex-fiance walking up to the cabin. She was shocked and then confessed the love for the man and went back home to tell her new fiance that she wanted to leave him and have a divorce. The new fiance got very angry and in a rage took her to the nearby cliff and proceeded to jump off together. The ex-fiance arrived but just too late only to hear the agonizing scream of his former wife. This occurred on October 17th and many visitors gather up in this day because it said that you can still hear her screams down the cliff. At a number 7 spot, we have the Poison Girl at Centennial Hall. Built in 1897 in Valentine, Nebraska is the historic Centennial Hall. It functions now as a 12 room museum, but before it was originally built to be a high school for the kids in the area. Then in 1947, a young female student was murdered inside of the school. She passed away after playing on her clarinet. 
This caused everyone to suspect that someone had intentionally poisoned her clarinet root. Ever since the incident, the school was haunted by this little girl. The teachers would report her in their classrooms after school times, and this would accompany the feeling of dread. Other visitors and students report to hear her clarinet being played in a very ominous way. Now as a museum, visitors still report this logo roaming the halls. She is said to have tugged on people's clothings, as well as placing her clarinet on many of the artifacts inside of the museum in hopes that someone will play it and be poisoned like she was. At number 6 spot, we have radioactive hornets. Although this theory is debunked, it was a crazy one when it was first released to the media because many people didn't know how radiation worked and whatever they said about it would just scare you. Story goes that after the nuclear disasters following World War II in the 1940s, Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant created a giant mutant killer hornet due to their exposure to radiation. The hornets were said to have grown four times their size and were reproducing exponentially. Then one year in Nebraska, it was reported that many people were passing away with stings and swelling on their bodies, which led many people to place a blame on radioactive hornet. Again, this is just a myth and no radiation didn't cause overgrown killer hornets. But still, these large Japanese hornets do exist and they go by the name of Asian Giant Hornet. At a number 5 spot, we have the Bailey House Museum. This red brick house in Brownsville was built just after the Civil War by Unison Officer Captain Benson M. Bailey. He alongside his wife lived in this house for many, many years until financial depression hit, causing them to move away. This relocation would eventually place them in a more dangerous area, leading to their eventual murders. Their murders were never solved, but many claim that it was the fault of a jealous neighbor who poisoned the two in order to get their property. Whatever happened, what is known is that the spirit of Captain Benson Bailey is said to lurk the home to this day. He is said to slam doors open and shut in the house in order to display his dominance and when he's agitated, he will swing them back and forth until you just stop doing whatever it is that he doesn't like. Others have reported seeing the man himself walking the halls and even standing up against the doors motionlessly. At a number 4 spot, we have Hummel Park. Despite being a beautiful park in appearance, there is a much darker story to it that may Makes you think twice before stepping foot here. This area is said to be the place where many lynchings, hangings, and satanic rituals were performed, and some believe they are happening to this day deep within the woods of the park. A stairway in the park has been called the Stairs to Hell because it is reported that it's impossible to count the same number of steps ascending the stairs as it is descending the stairs. Other than the fact that this place is covered in satanic graffiti, this place is just one of those places you shouldn't test out. You know? Just in case. At a number 3 spot, we have Walgren Lake Monster. Just west of Nebraska is the Walgren Lake, and this body of water is said to hold a 40 to 100 feet beast. Witnesses have said it looks like an alligator that has two front legs and a flipper on its back. Others have said it has a serpentine body, which closely resembles the Loch Ness Monster. But I swear, everyone everywhere believes they have the Loch Ness Monster in the area, or is that just me? It's said that you'll know this monster is near is that when you smell a hard stench of rotting flesh. The first written record of this monster is from a 1922 issue of the Hay Springs News. The following year, a local man named J.A. Johnson described the monster in an interview with the Omaha World Herald. According to the report, Johnson and his two friends were camping on the banks of the lake when they noticed a creature about 60 feet away. The men claimed that as soon as the beast saw them, it belted out a huge roar, whipped around, and plunged beneath the muddy lake water. At number 2 spot, we have the Ball Cemetery. Ball Cemetery is a cemetery in Springfield, Nebraska that was first used during the 19th century by pioneers. There is only one way in and one way out, and trespassers have been greeted by a caretaker with a shotgun who lives nearby. But instead of the caretaker keeping people out of his cemetery, it's more like he's trying to stop them from entering a place that is cursed. For decades, it has been said that this dark and lonely plot of land in the middle of nowhere is haunted by mysterious entities that defy rational explanation. Tall male apparitions sometimes attack nighttime visitors, and a female ghost laughs, speaks, and tugs on people's clothing. Photographs taken here often contain anomalies which believers swear are evidence of ghostly presences. All the way at a number one spot, we have the Hatchet House. In the town of Portal, there is a one-room schoolhouse that held a very gruesome murder. Legend says that back in the early 1900s, a teacher snapped at her students after they were misbehaving for hours. She had already been having problems back at home as well, so this was her final straw. Except this would be a little bit too brutal for our liking. She would then proceed to lock the door to the classroom and pull out a rusty hatchet from underneath her desk. From here, she would decapitate every single student in the class, and then she took their heads and placed them on top of each of their desks. 
and it gets worse so I apologize. She then carved out their hearts and brought them over to a nearby bridge to throw them down below one by one. 